Hello, if you find yourself here, then you're probably trying to learn Spring MVC, so let's jump into it. Up in the upper left corner of the Spring Source Tool Suite, the official IDE, uh, there's a button that says Spring Project. You can choose that, but it, it creates uh, an empty project for us, and we don't want something totally empty. We want something reasonably set up, so I choose Spring Template Project. It usually will go with Spring MVC Project. The first time you load that up, it's going to start a download. For that template but since i've already downloaded it you see the green arrow is gone and we have other options here but uh spring mc project is the most vanilla option that we can go with right now so hit next and we'll give it a name first lesson and give it a package name i like to start it off with com and then the apps name oops first lesson and with the suffix of source and hit finish you see that Spring created a project first, so let's just right click run as run on server just to compile it for the first time. Now we have a home page up and running, and very quickly, let's see where everything is um, file wise. So, in the source main, Java is the main package which contains the home controller which loads this uh, home.jsp. Up. Let's see where home.jsp is. It's in the main web app. Web app is the root of the web project, and a web inf is second in command. And resources contains the images and CSS files and JS, JS files and what have you. And the views uh, contain the home.jsp, and we'll see why. Um, in most web framework applications, web.xml is the first thing that the application sees. And the all the other uh, XML configurations branch out of web.xml. So uh, we see that the main servlet, the dispatcher server, is uh, called app servlet, and it's contained in Spring app servlet, and it's given the location na and name servlet context. So we'll open that up, and we see that uh, our view resolver, internal resource view resolver, is uh, it tells the application to look in web INF, and then views for our JSP files and look inside views for any files ending with .jsp. So our home controller here uh, returned a view name named home. So it knows to look inside views for a file named home that ends with .jsp and loads that up. And you see the contents here that says hello world at the time when the server is server time. And our homework says, uh, hello world, the time when the server is, uh, whatever. And let's look at the home controller real fast. All right. So, uh, this is an annotation. If you've done Java programming, then you've seen annotations, but other languages, uh, it's kind of rare, kind of like in C++. I've only seen, uh, annotations in Qt, GUI, but let's break this down because we don't need the extra code like a uh, logger and a uh, locale class for our purposes right now. So let's reconstruct our own our own first method. So it's going to be a public method. It's going to return a string like before when I return the word home as the view name and you can name this method anything. So to prove that we'll name it bloop and you don't have to have a uh, argument but usually control methods have a model so we'll t return the same home page that it had before we deleted it okay here's the problem um, there's something called handler mapping and basically that's when uh, a person types into their uh, their uh, URL for example our app name is first lesson, so it's going to have that. And then a person uh, types in index.htm. So that index.htm is the word that the application is going to take to try to match it up with one of the, the methods inside this controller here. So the most usual way to do that is uh, give it the annotation request mapping. And then the value is going to contain the the string that it's going to try to match up with. So in this case, 
uh, we, we picked index.htm. So now whenever the person types in slash first lesson slash index.htm, it's going to pick this controller method and return the view named home, which is the home.jsp. So let's save that and right click, run as. We'll see when it loads up, it tries to load the old page, which is just a slash. And we'll type in the new page, index.htm. And the HTM is meaningless, it's just part of the string name. And hit go. And now we have the same uh, home page shown again, but this time, since we took out the locale class, it no longer shows the time, it just says the time on the server is, which says right here that the time on the server is. So we see that it comes out of home.jsp. And optionally, if you're familiar with HTTP protocols, uh, you could specify the request method is get, uh, since this is a request method. In case in your class you have more than one method, and uh, with similar path values, and you want them to do different things, like uh, you want one to do post, you want the other to do put. So let's look at how that works real quick. Um, let me just copy and paste this. Uh, just once. And uh, at the end of this, we'll uh, put uh, two. For the first one, we'll put one. Both of them are gets, and uh, its name is boot two. And let's give this home to. So now we'll see our controller doing two things. It has two methods in it. So let's copy our old home, paste it in there once more, and name it home two .jsp. And inside. We'll specify that this is number two. Just to see that Spring really does recognize um, different controllers and leads you to different pages. Go ahead and run as to refresh everything. Right, so index.htm1 should go to the old page, and 2 should go to the new one. This is number 2, which goes into home2.jsp, because we specified home2, and it looks in the views folder for home2.jsp. Pretty simple. And now we want some input. We want the person to be able to pass things in to the URL. Uh, Kind of like the old days where you have the question mark and then you have a uh, hash key and then you have the hash value, which let's say it's a random value of 50. So if a person goes to uh, index.htm question mark milk equals 50, we want the page to show that value. Um, so the way we do that is... Uh, Inside of the argument parameter, first we'll specify a value named uh, milk. And then we'll give it the annotation, the special magic formula, uh, request param. And we'll import that. Then we'll save it and go to home.jsp. And uh, fix the header that says the value uh, the user inputted is. And then we'll use Spring's expression language, which is a dollar sign and two curly brackets. And uh, type in the value milk value, which we'll define right now. Um, 
now we can put the model to good use. So we'll take this model up here and call it and call dot add attribute and give it the name we just put into the home.jsp milk value. It can be any name. And the value we want to put in is milk from here. Give that a save. And just go ahead and delete the one from that path. All right. Let's run it out again. So now when we uh, type in that URL we were talking about, it should display the 50 index.htm question mark milk equals uh let's do qwerty and then 50 the value the user inputted is qwerty 50 and that's the old way uh to pass in values let's look, look at the restful way now because rest is a uh, sort of the neo-popular culture or tradition to pass in values and Let's say, uh, in the old days, we said things like, uh, uh, list milk. We gave it, uh, commands like that. List milk equals true. And in English class, we learned that list is a verb. Well, it can be a verb if you, if you use it as a verb. So it's telling the application to list milk. And, uh, REST does things sort of in the way of nouns. So uh, instead of list milk equals true, it's going to look like uh, milk. Uh, uh, milk 50 or whatever. So now we just have the noun milk and pass in the value 50. And we'll see how to do that. Instead of request param, we're going to have path variable. All right, and then we'll import that. Okay, and additionally, now that we have rest, uh, go to the path index.htm slash milk, and then we have the value, and we're going to indicate that where the value is. So the value is going to be inside the curly brackets, and it's going to be named milk, the same name as the string milk, which is going to be passed in here. So let's see how that works. Save it. All right. So now we type in index.htm slash milk, the fixed name. And then the value, which is 70. So we see it just looks different and has a, a little bit of a difference. But you see here, this is the restful way as opposed to the old traditional way. So let's have a before and after look, shall we? So I'm going to paste the restful way down here. And then uh, I'm going to just cut this uh, for now and backtrack back to the old request param way. Okay. And repaste this. So up here you see that this is uh, old request param way. And, and you see here that request param accepts the value like question mark uh elephant size equals uh, 99 and uh the old way basically that's what it looks like question mark and then uh the hash value the hash key and then the hash value and if you have additional parameters you put the ampersand sign and milk equals 87 and it just keeps going on like that but the rest way looks more like a looks more like elephant size 
uh, 99 and then milk 87 so you can see that the values are more built into the path and hence we call it the path variables and um, up here basically we have hash keys and hash parameters or hash values so we call it request param uh, so that's pretty self-explanatory so we'll see you in the next lesson and thanks for uh, watching this first tutorial